Hello, it's Richard at Richard's Guitars. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about uh, uh, something strange that happened early this week. Um, I thought it would be a good inf sort of topic of conversation and get some feedback from you guys. Um, but just show you something. Where are we? Where is it? Somewhere down there. Hopefully you can see it. Um, so that's the Boss RC300 and um, all connecting into a super amp at the moment. It's a bit noisy for some reason. So Rich, you can tell me why that is because you, you, you set it up. Um, and um, Rich Mark II has uh, been a great help and he set this up, but it's, it's a bit noisy for some reason. But anyway, just been having a bit of fun with that and um, it's just so cool. And I'm gonna try and bring the, um, the looping pedal into some of the videos, I think, because as I've talked to you about before, I, I, you know, I feel limited with my repertoire when you're just noodling away and I want to show you something. But it's absolutely amazing if I just put down a quick uh, rhythm part and, uh, you know, then you get to hear different sounds. We can put down maybe a warm, bluesy rhythm bit with a bit more of a cutting lead guitar part at the top. And you hear it musically in a bit more of a musical context. So, yeah, I thought that would be quite cool. So, hence the, uh, the looper being here. So, we'll see. Um, and um, as I get my head around it, it might act as a kind of a useful kind of tool for helping you guys. I mean, there's plenty of resources where you can see about uh, looping pedals, so it probably isn't going to be a great tutorial, but um, it might inspire you to do something creative yourself. Um, but what I really want to talk about today, uh, see if I can find something a bit more comfortable <coughs> to sit back into my chair. Um, there we go. Um, yeah, I did. A, I posted a video. Uh, no, I posted a picture on Facebook, and um, very, very innocently. And what it was, it was a picture of an Eastman SB59 Gold Top. Absolutely beautiful guitar. I'm pretty sure it was a Gold Top. Oh, it might have been um, an aged violin. I'll post the picture anyway. I'll post the picture, and you'll see it here now. And so that will explain it. And I remember walking into the workshop area. And seeing Chris working on this Eastman guitar, and I just felt really, really proud. And I was like, wow, isn't that amazing? You know, these are, these are amazing guitars. They're incredible instruments. And here we are, you know, doing the fret ends and absolutely kind of nailing every possible little detail. And I thought it made a lovely picture. So I took, in, the, in that moment, I just took the photograph and whacked it on Facebook. And I, I take it kind of as a compliment, but... I was shocked by how many negative comments there were, which I've never had before. I've never had negative comments ever about what we do with our work pre-sale. So it was fascinating that there seems to be this love of the brand, which is great, that's so high, high, you know, the, the passions are so high that people are saying, why on earth would you do the fret ends on that guitar? You know, these are handmade guitars. They are the best of the best you know you can have a look at the, i'll put a link to the maybe the facebook page um so you can see the comments yourself you know not tons of them but there were several several people and one person opted one person said um is it possible to opt not to have that work done if i buy an eastman from you and another one kind of said i would i would rather play it before having a nail having a file nail file having a file put to my eastman guitar it was really, it really just, it really took me back. I was like, wow, um, hmm, interesting point. So I never, I never ever knew that that, that would create such negative uh, views. So I thought I'd throw it to you and get a bit of an idea from you, see what you think. Um, is this just a minority or is, is it a genuine point that some, you know, some people might put a product on such high a pedestal that actually they feel that we're demeaning the product or, or somehow going to, damage the product by 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 touching the frets <laughs> so of course nobody has to have a guitar set up by us if they don't want to and i mean it just happens to be the entire point of buying it from me but but um not the entire, i suppose it's not the entire point is it but you know i love the product and you want to be supported long term but let's just call it integral the setup is an integral part of the service so it seems ever so odd that some you know, number of people would say, oh my goodness, don't touch the fret ends. So I just thought I'd try and make it clear. Um, we don't do anything that isn't needed to be done. I mean, it would be crazy to, you know, Chris was clearly working on that guitar. He'd obviously run his hands over the frets and thought, 
there is a big difference between a guitar needing, you know, I mean, dare I say, you know, we have a vintage guitar in and the frets are sharp and, you know, cut your fingers on them, whatever, and we, we do the fret ends. Now, Chris will sometimes say the frets were so poor on, on, on a particular model that now they're, they're kind of, now they're good-ish, you know, but they're not, they're never going to be great unless we spend hours on the thing, which we clearly can't do. So we're there to dramatically improve on what we get. Um, and uh, we don't rush anything, but there is a natural limit to how how many hours you could spend. We we average about an hour on every guitar, and I know absolutely without question um, uh, because because we were doing that video last week about the vintage guitar. He he spent an hour and a half on that guitar, and that was pretty normal. You know, it was a pretty it wasn't a particularly bad one. It wasn't bad, it, but he spent an hour and a half. He said he told me how long he spent on it. So that's an hour and a half. Um, so when you do an Eastman, clearly it shouldn't take anywhere near as long as an hour and a half, but we're not setting a timer and we're not here to kind of cut corners. So it's a really interesting point, you know, what... <laughs> so yeah, thought I'd throw it by you and see, you know, I'm going to call it Eastman Gate. <laughs> this is Eastman Gate, we've raised a can of worms. Um, probably the most negative comments I've ever had on a post. So it's, yeah, really interesting. Tell me what you think. Um, but I just want to put your mind at rest that we don't just, you know, why would we put, why would we, so, hang on, let me just show you something, let me, we'll have a look at something, hang on, <laughs> my Eastman's, ooh, lovely, 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 let's just do something, let's have a look, let's have a look, so, uh, let's just have a look, Eastman SB59, hang on, I'm going to try and do something on the fly here. I mean, they're perfectly fine, but, oop, can you sit right, oh, I'm just running my hand. The thing is, what I'd call that is, like, you sometimes you'll have a, a squared off fret, maybe rather than a, a rounded fret, and even on this, which feels lovely, I mean, there's nothing, you're not going to catch your fingers on anything. But there is an element of, well, actually, if we're going to do it, if we've got it in the workshop, we can just turn that slightly sharper or slightly squared off fret um, and, and make it maybe a little bit more rounded, you know, just a, little, just a touch. And that's, I mean, these do feel nice. Um, so there we go. I, I, I'm not going to say... See, there's all these, there's little edges here. I can feel, can I, yeah, there's, there's little edges. And, and the technician literally just, it's just literally a soft touch on the, on the file that just turns around, he'll turn it as it goes over. And he, he will just kind of round off, round off that fret. So just gives you a little bit of an air, a rounded edge rather than a sharper, a, a sharper edge. And frankly, that's, that's what we do. Um, so there you go, yeah. Give me, let, me, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. And um, I'd, I'd be really keen to know what, whether, well, what you think. Okay, so tell me. Bye.